If you've been a Ravens fan for a while, then there's been a lot of great moments when it's come to Justin Tucker and kicking. I, I remember so many different times when Justin Tucker be walking out there for a, a, a long kick, whether it's over 50 uh, and sometimes even over 60. And I would be nervous. I'd be nervous every time. But at the same time, I would have that confidence where it's like, oh, yeah, that, that's JT. He can make this. We could trust him with every single kick but recently that confidence hasn't been all the way there and that's not only for field goals but it's been for some extra points too because it's just been a big difference especially over these past couple of years with Justin Tucker and a lot of us have been wondering like what exactly is the issue what's happening with our guy JT because he was once the best kicker in the league he was once the most accurate kicker in the league now he still is the most accurate kicker in the league and it's crazy to think that even with JT missing some of these kicks that he's been missing this year and really over the past couple of years that he still holds that title for most accurate kick in the league so that shows you how great he already was and it also shows you the high standard that we as Ravens fans we hold him to because with JT uh, as a kicker when he misses like we go crazy we go crazy like what how did JT miss that what is going on with him is something wrong like we trip out because we just we weren't used to him missing but it's certainly starting in 2022 uh, and then last year and then carrying over to this year something's been off with Justin Tucker and we've been wondering exactly what the deal is but there's a YouTuber that goes by the name of Isaac Punts that tried to shed some light on the situation for all of us Baltimore Ravens fan and if what he says holds to be true that's a pretty big deal for the Baltimore Ravens and we would hope that they would get that fixed ASAP. Team Keep It Clean, before we get into it, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on, and leave a like on the video. Man, y'all been doing your thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> y'all been doing y'all thing man i appreciate y'all i love y'all so much thank you thank you thank you thank you uh now let's get into it so there was a youtuber by the name of isaac punts and he dropped the video just a couple of days ago that ended up going crazy and i knew that it would because ravens fans we've been looking for answers with this whole jt thing what's happening what's his problem what's the issue with justin tucker um because people have been saying justin tucker's wash he fell off he can't kick no more we should find a replacement all types of things about justin tucker but what is the exact issue and i don't know I, I didn't know and i hope that it's like with, with this video i hope that this is not the issue but isaac punts made some really good points now uh we will link the video down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself but it says the the real reason justin tucker keeps missing um and basically what he talked about in that video was jordan stout he said it's not even an issue with justin tucker he said the issue has been with his holder and the, the placement of the football on the holds for the kicks and i said oh my goodness because i remember earlier this year uh when john harbaugh was asked about it he said oh it's just a technique thing. It's just a technique thing. And it was, that was a really vague answer. And we know John Harbaugh with certain people, he don't like throwing them under the bus. Uh, and Justin Tucker certainly one of those people. Uh, but it seems as if Jordan Stout is too. Because I guess if, if you come out and say, hey, Jordan Stout, he needs to be a better holder of the football uh, when it comes to the, the field goal kicks, then you could ruin his confidence. That's something that you tell somebody offline, not in an interview, not in a press or anything like that. That's something that you tell them at practice, like, hey, let's work on that. And who knows, maybe they have been. I don't know. But if that is an issue, that would be very alarming. But something that Isaac Punts didn't even mention in the uh, in the video is the timing. Uh, Cause shout out to my guy Pedro. Pedro, um, this is his name is R Horms on Twitter, and he tweeted this, and it's like. You, when you put everything together, it's like, ooh, okay, wait a minute. He said, I think it's time to start this rough conversation. Should the Ravens move on from Justin Tucker next season? Since 2022, that's very important. But since 2022, Tucker missed 15 field goals and three extra points. He said in 2023, uh, he missed the 56-yarder, had a 61-yard field goal blocked. I don't trip over those. That's, in my opinion, that's not Justin Tucker's fault at all. When a field goal is blocked, because that, that would make, usually those happen on the longer field goal. So he got to put it at an angle to where uh, it's, it's sort of like an airplane. 
And when an airplane don't just go straight up in the air right away, an airplane kind of it takes off slowly and, and it gets it gets higher and higher and it's on that incline. So that's the same thing you got to do with a football with them extra long field goals because you got to have it at on an incline at the right time, not too early, uh, but certainly not too late to where it can go through the uprights. But anyway, for the field goal blocks, I don't trip on those about Tucker. But anyway, he says since 2022, um, he had uh, he had a 61 yard field goal blocked and 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 a 55 yard field goal blocked and a 50 yard field goal blocked but in 2022 he missed from 56 yards 67 yards and 48 yards and he also missed one extra point then in 2023 last year um he had 155 yard blocked uh and he also missed from 59 61 53 44 and missed one extra point and then in 2024 this year he missed the 53 yarder 56 yarder 46 yarder 50 yarder and miss one extra point so um that's around the time when stuff started going downhill so i was talking to my guy the other day and it was like hold up that is is that around the time when somebody got drafted and somebody else retired and the whole kicking thing changed and yes it was because jordan stout he got drafted in the fourth round of 2022 and we remember sam cook he retired. Now, he did. He is still around the team, working with the team, but he retired. He ain't holding for Justin Tucker no more. It's Jordan Stout. So, is that a coincidence? It could be. So, maybe our guy Isaac Punch was on to something. But, it doesn't stop there. Because, Jeff Zrebic, he said the following, and this is a little bit scary, too. Um, Justin Eckert uh, asked Jeff Zrebic. He said, uh, I'm sure they won't, but they're crazy if they don't make Tucker outkick someone every day over the next week to keep his job. He's very clearly going to cost him in January or worse. So basically saying, hey, Justin Tucker needs some competition. He needs to be going against somebody to make him better. We know Harbaugh always says... Iron sharpens iron. Well, Harbaugh don't say the, the Bible actually says that. But um, Harbaugh always brings that up. Iron sharpens iron. And basically what that means is that you want people around you that's going to make you better. So that's what competition is all about. But Jess Rebick replied with this. He said, what would concern me is since that first field goal attempt in Cleveland, so a couple weeks ago, where his plant leg slipped, he doesn't appear to be kicking it very cleanly. Not sure if he got hurt on that play or what. He said he didn't, but it hasn't looked the same since. I imagine he's fighting it a bit. Now, with Jeff Zrebic, he don't just put anything out there because he knows that it will go back to his name as if he said it. So if Jeff Zrebic is saying something like that, then he is like 100% confident in what he's seen with his own eyes. Um, so if Justin Tucker is dealing with an injury, that would make stuff even scarier because if what Isaac Punt said is true, as far as Jordan Stout being the holder and that being the issue, that's a problem. But then on top of that, if Justin Tucker is hurt too, that would be another problem. So I guess what this is just something that we just really got to continue to watch for. And I mean, all we can do is hope for the best, but hope that the Baltimore Ravens, they address it in the best way that they possibly can. You got John Harbaugh. He's a coach that came from special teams. And we know the Baltimore Ravens special teams ain't been the best this year. They ain't been the worst, but they ain't been the best this year. But if anybody knows how to fix it, it's John Harbaugh. Yesterday we were watching football and we were watching the uh, Commanders and Steelers game. Rooting for the Commanders, hoping the Commanders will pull it off against the Steelers just to help us out a little bit, but they did. And it was a very, very stressful game. It was a down-to-the-wire game, but it did feel really nice to be watching one of those type of games, but it not be the Baltimore Ravens playing. Um, this 10-day break, I can't tell y'all how much we appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it. I, it. It was just so nice to just be able to watch football on a Sunday and Whew, just chill and be like, hey, whatever happens, it happens. Yeah, I hope the Commanders win, but if they don't, okay. Oh, well, Ravens still got to take care of business. But um, they really got to take care of business because these next three games, uh, you got the Steelers coming up, and they're rolling right now. Uh, they went to they, – they had Justin Fields in there. He was doing his thing, um, and they were winning. But they said, you know what? Let's try to get even better, and let's put Russell Wilson in there. And they had T.J. Watt doing his thing, but they said, you know what? Let's try to get even better. Let's uh, let's go get a Preston Smith. They took advantage of him wanting to get out of Green Bay. Um, and they still got Alex Highsmith. I think he left the game early yesterday with an injury. I'm not. Did he come back? I don't think he did. But we'll see what happens with him. But Steelers are a good team right now. Um, their offense is doing a thing. Even uh, new addition Mike Williams, he ended up catching a touchdown pass from Russell Wilson in that game yesterday against the Commanders. Um, and Patrick Queen, he made some plays yesterday too. He made some plays in yesterday's game too. But um, Steelers, they they rolling right now. But Ravens, um, 
they got a big game against them coming up this Sunday. And with that game against the Steelers, uh, that is going to be, I believe, for first place in the AFC North. I believe it is because Steelers sitting at seven and two, I believe, and the Ravens are sitting at seven and three. Um, and I, I feel like Ravens, they got like a slight advantage because both teams coming off of wins, both teams coming off of very stressful down to the wire wins. But the Ravens, they coming off of theirs three days earlier than the Pittsburgh Steelers was, so they will have had more time to rest and more time to prepare, too. So that gives Ravens an advantage with that. But when you look at the next three games, like, they play the Steelers this Sunday. Then they play the Chargers uh, on next Monday night. And then they play the Eagles the Sunday, the following Sunday. So, so oh, my goodness, Ravens, they got them a schedule. But one thing that we know about these Baltimore Ravens is that they play to their competition. So if their competition is winners, then Ravens going to play some winning football. If their competition is losers, then, yeah, you know the rest of that story. Hopefully the Ravens can get that fixed. Hopefully they already played their losing football enough because they lost to the Raiders. They lost to the Browns. They also lost to the Chiefs. But Chiefs, they keep finding ways to win, which is annoying. But don't worry. Hey, Chiefs, we coming for y'all. Watch, watch. Like, I know a lot of Ravens fans don't believe that. A lot of football fans in general don't believe that. But we, we're coming for revenge on them Chiefs. It's on the way. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But um, these next three games, like, you, you got some tough opponents. And since when? I didn't even know the Chargers were 6-3. and three. I had no clue about that. So look at Giro over there doing his thing. Look, look, at, look at Greg Roman with Justin Herbert. But anyway, um, Ravens got some big opportunities coming up. Over the next couple of weeks with those three teams. Um, still, all going to be tough games. All going to present their own challenges. Um, definitely the Steelers game for sure. Uh, and Ravens only, they got to worry about one game at a time. You can't look ahead. But you got such a big opportunity right here um, to really grab a, a firm grasp of your AFC uh, playoff spot. Um, because we all expect the Baltimore Ravens to make the playoffs. But, like, there, there's a lot of good teams in the AFC, man. They really are. And I think the Ravens right now, even sitting at seven and th they like in like I think number five overall in the AFC. And it's like every time I see that, I'm like, what? Really? How? But it, it makes sense because uh, there's there's so many good teams. Um, but anyway, the Baltimore Ravens like with that tough schedule, like we're gonna see what they made of. Jeff Reebok said it today. He said if they're in first place in the AFC North when they enter their Week 14 bye, they'll have earned it, and that couldn't be more than true. So now we made it to my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, you can send your question directly on Patreon. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, let's just get straight into it. Easy upgrades. This next question came from my guy, Justin. And you know what? Normally we wouldn't. But since we in a good mood, we like chilling since the Ravens ain't playing, it's feeling good. You sent it to the wrong email. Send it to the wrong email. I'm going to give you this one pass. I don't like giving out passes for this at all. But let's send it to the right email next time, please. Because, whoo, you better be glad we ain't coming off no Ravens loss. Because this would have went straight in the trash. Anyway, he said, uh, A Graven, first and foremost. Love the content. I hope all is great for you and the fam. Congrats on your little one. Appreciate you, Justin. Thank you, man. He said, looking at some of the free agents available, it seems all but unfathomable that EDC isn't handing out short-term prove-it deals. Xavier Howard, Shaq Leonard, David Bakhtiari, Tyree Phillips. <laughs> we remember that name. I don't think it's coming back. Uh, Trey Turner, Micah Hyde, uh, Jerron Curse. Oh, he was a former Raven, too. So, uh, anyway, he said, the list is crazy and full of guys who would probably take a pay cut to chase a ring. Here's a link if you want to check it out. Um, well, well, with those guys, yeah, he, they're there. They're available. Um, as far as cornerbacks, like, somebody brought up Xavier Howard a couple days ago. It couldn't hurt, really. Um, we'll, we'll possibly see what um, Tredavious White role ends up being. I don't think they brought him in to bench Brandon Stevens. But at the same time, they try to get Marshawn Lattimore. So they're trying to upgrade Brandon Stevens' spot, obviously. So it's it's nice to know that they see what we see. And they try to address it. It obviously didn't go through. But now what are they going to do? Are they going to just be like, all right, hey, we riding with Brandon Stevens. We got to hope he gets better. Would they make a move there? Would, we, would they try to bring up Tredavious White slowly to take his role? We'll see. Because if they sign somebody like Xavier Howard, he would not take Brandon Stevens' spot like that. Like, right away, okay, Xavier Howard, we signed you. Boom. Uh, you, you in for Brandon Stevens. No, it, it wouldn't happen like that. So, um, yeah, with any of these guys that they brought in, like, the only reason that they would sign any of these guys would be because of injury. 
they're not going to bring any of these guys on to really upgrade the team. They possibly could, but Ravens wouldn't bring them on to upgrade the team, especially at this point of the season. He said, anyways, I'm rambling. And much like EDC giving up draft picks for... <laughs> So much like EDC giving up draft picks for proven players, I'm out. Hey, and again, like I said last time, man, I love the questions that we get from our regulars. I love y'all. Don't think I don't love y'all, but I love when we get it from our newbies, too. So next question came from my guy, LaVar. He said, is it just me or does Roe look to be playing a little bit slower and heavier compared to previous seasons? Oh, no, it ain't just you. It's everybody. Uh, and he said, do you think uh, Todd should give Tylen more, get Tylen more involved in the offense, eventually becoming wide receiver three over Nelly? I think that could happen next year. Um, as far as this year, yeah, you can get him more involved. And he has been more involved, especially when it comes to blocking, run blocking. Um, but Tylen Wallace is somebody that, that gives you something, too. And I could see them re-signing him uh, to like a, a two- or three-year deal uh, next year because I believe he's a free agent after this year. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, see, that's such a good problem to have, though, because at wide receiver, you always got Zay Flowers. Uh, you got Rashad Bateman. But then you think, oh, how are we going to get Deontay Johnson more involved? How do we get Nelly more involved? Well, I don't really see nobody saying that. But, hey, Nelly's still been doing his thing. So don't sleep on Nelly. But how do we get Tylen Wallace more involved? How do we get Mark Andrews more involved? How do we get Isaiah Likely more involved? How do we get Charlie Kohler more involved? Justice Hill's already involved. How do we get Derrick Kenny more involved in the passing game? Uh, how do we get our old wide receiver one, Pat Ricard, more involved? So to, to be able to have those conversations, this is what we dreamed of for the longest as Ravens fans. To be able to have these conversations about multiple weapons. Keaton Mitchell, too. But to be able to have these conversations about how do we get this guy involved? How do we get that? Because that shows that a lot of different guys are contributing in a positive way to the offense. 